Hi everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing my scan updates with you. I just had my scans done last week of MRI of my head and neck and a full body PET scan. I've been getting these scans done every three months. So my last scans were in September and it was showing some slight progression, but mostly stable. So this time I was super nervous, but super excited at the same time to see what the results would be because I really stepped up my game in the last three months and just basically threw the whole kitchen sink at it. And I also went to this cancer center in Virginia called Heartland for 11 days and I did a bunch of alternative treatments there that I really think helped me with the results. But anyway, back to going over the results. And stick with me till the end because I'm going to be sharing the things that I've been doing to, to get these really good uh, outcomes, okay? I have a tumor in my neck in the C2 vertebra that was about 3 centimeters in size. It has been steadily getting bigger since March. Well, it kind of grew rapidly and then it, it slowed down after I started the whole diet and everything. And it finally stabilized in September, um, but in this most recent scan, it shrank by two centimeters. I mean, I am so happy about that. It went from three centimeters to now just one centimeter. And you guys can see here uh, on the scans, uh, the one all the way to the left is the newest one. And then the one all the way to the right is from May. And you can see the difference in size and how much smaller it is. I mean, this tumor was such a pain in the neck, literally. And I had a feeling that it actually shrank because my pain was improving so much in the last few months and I can actually move my neck again and it's not super stiff like how it was before. I have another tumor in my right rib that was also causing a lot of pain and that one shrank a little bit as well. Not as much as the one in the neck, but compared to the uptake uh, on the activity on the PET scan as compared to before, it was a lot lower now. When you get a PET scan, they inject this radioactive glucose particle into you that becomes a tracer and this radioactive glucose gets taken up by the cancer cells because it's sugar and that's what they like to feed off of. And so they can take this and measure it to determine how metabolically active it is. And then they assign it a number and it's called the SUV max. Well, the higher the number, the more active it is. The SUV max on all of my bone metastases, including the one in the rib, decrease significantly. I mean, some of them are just not even lighting up at all, which is amazing because I have not had this result at all, even when I was doing well before. And on top of that, there are some signs of sclerosis, which means that the bone matrix is uh, thickening and that can mean healing of the bones in a lot of cases. So I'm super happy about that as well. In my skull, it was kind of mixed because one of the lesions completely just, they couldn't see it anymore. The other one, got smaller, but I have one that's on the right side of my clivus at the base of the skull that grew a little bit. And I've had issues with this before with inflammation uh, because I did get it radiated twice. So my oncologist thought that maybe it was just from inflammation and not true growth. So we're gonna just see what happens with that on the next scans. So after nine months of pain and suffering and just one thing happening after another, I just finally get these most incredible scan results and I just can't put into words how excited I am to see these results. It's like, wow, it just all paid off. And it's also exciting because I know that if I can do this and it can happen for me, it can happen for anyone. There is a path to healing. There is hope. And I'm a walking proof of that. So I'm just going to keep experimenting on myself and do these things so that I can figure out a way to heal fully and share it with everyone. And that's my mission. So I'm gonna back up a little bit and just tell you what has been going on in the past year. So you can see how drastic these results are and, and this turnaround for me. And then I'm gonna go into the details of what I do on a daily basis to fight cancer. If you're new here, let me introduce myself. Um, my name is Ni, nee and I was diagnosed with stage four sarcoma in 2016 at the age of 31. Since then, I've undergone a lot of treatments, including radiotherapy, uh, targeted chemotherapy, immunotherapy, and multiple surgeries. Uh, and so in 2019, when the cancer continued to grow and spread, despite all of the treatments that I was doing, I decided to take a more holistic route and take matters into my own hands. I wanted to figure out the root cause and to heal from the root cause and to heal from inside out. 
I didn't want to leave any stones unturned. And this was the beginning of my incredible journey back to life and truly living. So I did a lot of research and took action and eventually had some really great results. I mean, I got to the point where 13 out of the 15 lung tumors that I had completely disappeared and all of the bone meds had stopped growing. My oncologist even took me off treatment thinking that I was doing so well. And you know, I, I thought I had beat it. So little did I know the cancer just kind of went into this dormant state and I wasn't fully healed and I had this false sense of security. My biggest mistake was taking my foot off the gas way too soon, thinking I could just go back to life as usual. But to be honest, I was really burnt out from all the things that I was doing and I just really wanted to be normal again. I went back to my old habits and my old routine with all that stress and not taking care of myself. It started with little small things like just one cheat meal here or there and somehow I just found myself eating out several times a week. And the more I let myself go, the worse I felt physically and mentally and it just kind of snowballed until things got really bad. And so by this time, we had just moved from California, sorry, from Georgia to California and so I had to get a new oncologist and it took a while for this. I finally see him and he's all worried and he's like, why did you come off of treatment when it was working? And I was just kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> and so basically, um, you know, he, he decided to put me on a different type of immunotherapy combination called Optivo and Yervoy. I had been on Optivo before, so the Yervoy part was the new one. And it's supposed to be a lot more toxic with side effects, but I went with it anyway because I was in pretty bad shape. And then the plan was to radiate both of my femurs, but because we were worried that there might be a weakening of the bone and it might fracture, he sent me to an orthopedic oncologist whom I saw in June. And that was when he did x-rays in his office and he kind of just looked at me like, okay, we need to do surgery on you like tomorrow. And I was in complete shock because I did not know that it was that bad. And I was like, what do you mean have surgery? And he was like, you know, it can break any time now and we really need to just prevent it from breaking. And so we'll do the right side first and then we'll do the left side. So here I am like, just what? Like I have to get surgery now in both of my legs. I just went from getting off treatment, thinking I was in remission to now being in the doctor's office, being told that I need to get surgery. So. I had a, a trip planned to go to Italy for 10 days for my friend's wedding. So I told him uh, I could not do the surgery tomorrow and it's just going to have to wait until I come back. So I go to the trip and of course on the third day there, I had a fall and I slipped down the stairs and I just heard a pop in my groin and I, it was so painful. I couldn't walk. I was basically on the floor and my husband and a couple of friends had to help me uh, lift me back into the car where we headed back to the hotel and the following day um, we got crutches with the help of the local hotel staff and then we headed over to Florence so we stopped by a hospital there and they did x-rays which thankfully came back no with no fracture because if it was broken it would have been bad so um, we stayed for the rest of the trip and I was rented like a scooter and a wheelchair during the trip and just walked with my crutches and we made it home safely. So I had my surgery on June 30th as planned on the right side and got discharged home four days later. And when I got discharged home that same night, I got up to go take a shower and I was putting all my weight on my left leg like I usually always do. And I just remember the leg just snapped and that moment kind of like froze because I was like, what just happened? I just, all I felt was pain, a rush of pain. And I fell to the ground and I sat there and I just could feel my bone grinding and tenting up. So I had to push it down to stabilize it. And I was just screaming at the top of my lungs. So my husband rushes in and he's freaking out. He's calling 911 and we're there sitting, waiting for the ambulance to come. So that whole process of them trying to get me out of the shower and into the stretcher and into the ambulance onto the hospital bed was just excruciatingly painful and I would not wish it upon my worst enemy. So I ended up getting surgery on the left side on July 5th and I stayed in the hospital for another week for a total of 11 days. That hospital stay was probably the darkest and the most depressing time in my life. 
and I honestly thought that I wasn't going to make it out alive. I had these panic attacks because I felt so trapped in my own body, not being able to move or walk, and I just felt like this was surely going to lead to my deterioration and I was going to just die from this. You know, for the first time since my diagnosis, um, this is how I felt. And I, I think a lot of it was also just from being in the hospital itself and then putting me on heavy duty pain medications that was probably causing some sort of a chemical imbalance because it was not like me at all to be thinking that way and talking that way. Ultimately, I escaped from the hospital and I got back home and spent the rest of the summer just trying to rehab. It was really, really hard, but I surprised myself by making pretty quick progress and regained a lot of my strength and mobility and even built some muscle. And now I'm happy to say that I'm walking pretty normally and I can even jump uh, and run a little bit. I'm working on it. I'm still going to the gym to try to build back my strength but it was the hardest thing that I have ever been through and I never ever want to go through that again. So now I'm gonna go over what I've been doing for the last six months. So the diet has been mostly eating an organic whole foods and plant-based diet. This means no processed or refined foods, no eating out, no added sugars of any kind. I do eat a lot of whole grains and legumes and beans, nuts and seeds on top of all the vegetables and fruits that I'm eating. I did start juicing again when I came back from the cancer center since we were juicing there and I aim to drink about 48 ounces of juice a day. Usually I do some sort of a carrot juice or a carrot and apple juice and then I use different vegetables for the green juice like kale, cucumbers, cabbage, beets, watercress, celery or whatever is left in my fridge. I did do some experimentation with my diet in June. Um, I decided to eat a carnivore diet, so it was mostly like ribeye steaks and butter, and I did have some fruits, very little, um, which probably made it worse. It probably wasn't a great idea, but I do not think that that diet was good for me at all because um, I actually developed more pain while I was doing it in my legs, and I do feel like it contributed to more rapid growth. Um, I also had some bad side effects, like my hair was falling out and my nails were brittle, so it wasn't good. Um, so yeah, back to the whole foods, plant-based mostly diet. In terms of supplements, I do take some, but I'm not super consistent with it. I just really don't like supplements that much. I do take the essential supplements that I found has helped me, and that's vitamin D3 plus K2, curcumin, trace minerals, fish oil, this osteoben uh, formula, which is uh, for my bones, berberine, beta-glucan, natokinase, and this um, green tea extract. I, I'm not like super consistent with it. I do take it and then some days I forget. So I think the results came from mostly some of the other things that I was doing more so than the, the supplements, but they do help and I do try to take them. Other natural treatments that I've been doing is uh, IV vitamin C uh, weekly, just once a week because that's all I can afford and have time for. And then I do subcutaneous mistletoe injections three days a week. And then I do low dose naltrexone four days out of the week. So all of these treatments are supposed to help with um, killing of the cancer cells or apoptosis. It helps to prevent metastasis or spread of the cancer. And it also wakes up the immune system and stimulates the immune system to fight off the cancer. In terms of exercise, I just make sure to really move my body as much as possible. And that's throughout the day um, and with breaks in between work and I have like a rebounder, a trampoline. I go to the gym, I go for walks, I do strength training. So it's kind of like a mix of everything. The whole idea is just to do whatever you feel like doing that, that you like doing. I do these other uh, treatments, it's called a, like hyperthermia, which means you're heating up your body to increase your core temperature to a fever state and that's supposed to uh, stimulate your immune system to fight off the cancer. I learned this when I went to the cancer center where we did these fever baths and you just sit in the tub and they fill it with hotter and hotter water up until about 110 degrees max. That's how about how, how hot a hot tub can get so without, without burning yourself. So um, they'll just keep adding the hot water and then keep monitoring your temperature every five minutes. And then once you get up to about 102 and above, you try to keep it there for about an hour. So it's really not recommended to do by yourself at home, but 
I don't really have anyone to help me with it, so I do do it by myself. I have this hot uh, water boiler next to me and I'll heat it up and pour hot water into the tub every five minutes and monitor my temperature. I can only stay about up to 103 because higher than that is just too tiring to do on my own and I don't want to pass out. So I do that and I meditate while I'm in the tub and try to visualize the cancer going away and I have different techniques for this. So that's been super helpful. And on the days that I don't do the fever baths, I'm usually in the gym going to the sauna and uh, going for cold plunges with the outdoor pool that they have and it's December right now and it is freezing. So it's great uh, that I have that and I can you know access the sauna and um, the cold. And so all of that I think is, is super helpful in just my overall health and combating um, all the side effects of the treatments. And um, yeah, and I really think that that's helped with my recovery. I did do some hyperbaric oxygen uh, treatments as well in the chamber, but I've only done a few of those uh, right after my surgery. Um, I just got like a red light mat that I'm going to start using. I'm super excited about that. And what else? Yeah, so in the future, I plan to do some other stuff, like I wanted to try the Parasite Cleanse and I wanted to do um, a heavy metal detox and try to get the mercury fillings out of my teeth. So I have to find a holistic dentist, a biological dentist to do that because I know oral health can be super important. And I forgot to mention that I started coffee enemas as well. I've been really not wanting to do that for such a long time because it's just, you know, it's a coffee enema but I gave in to doing it. And again, I learned that from when I went to the cancer center and it helped me so much with my energy and mood and pain. And, you know, it just felt like I was so much lighter. So I do it once a day now and um, I'm going to stick with it because I really think it helped and it helped heal my gut too. If you made it this far, <laughs> thank you for watching. And I know this video was super long, but I just had a lot of updates and I wanted to talk about what I've been doing. So I'll get in more detail with that in the future and make um, different videos about specific things. Um, so yeah, so if you uh, haven't subscribed, I would love it if you did. And so you can follow along with me on my journey. Leave a comment below so I know what you're thinking and what your, uh, what your thoughts are. And yeah, and I would love to connect with you and um, continue doing this. Okay, thank you.